today, in the last part of this series, uh, part nine, This Is Us. Uh, this, this series has been about, um, you know, not necessarily breaking habits, but really creating new habits that are sustainable, that will last, uh, that are not just uh, habits, not, not just things that we do, but a way of life. It's really transformation in itself. That's, and that's what our ministry is all about, is transformation. So God wants us to live a life that is being transformed as we go uh, into the image of Jesus Christ. And we've talked about many subjects in, the, you know, at least eight previously to the day um, in this series. And last week, we talked about the big picture, making sure that you can see the big picture of what God has planned for you and keeping the big picture in mind as you go through the things that would try and stop you, um, you know, whether they're designed by the enemy or they're just a part of life. Some things are just a part of life. And we, if we keep our mind on the big picture, it fuels us to actually go through the things that... Um, you know, are in our way, um, or even as I talk about the entire series, we talk about things that are sustainable. We want to do things that we can continue to do over and over and over again. But today, in part nine, what we're talking about is, um, you know, the habits that we've developed. When we say this is me, um, this is this entire series is about this is us. And this is like all the different facets of who we are. Uh, this is me today is kind of becoming more individual for you and for me. We've discovered a lot of things, um, you know, uh, over the last several weeks about um, who we are and who we should be and how we can actually become more like Christ because that's, we do it through habits, whatever habit, whatever, behavior you're trying to um, take on as a new behavior, then it has to become a habit or it's not sustainable. So we we want to find out today, you know, how do we fully express who we are? Because a few ser- few messages ago, we talked about, you know, your potential. What is your potential? Your, pit- your potential is who God really created you to be. And what, however you're living that out is what's important. If you're not living that out, uh, the you know, one message we talked about, remember we looked at the ant where Solomon said, go to the ant, ye sluggard. And really what that, what that scripture is saying, what that word sluggard is saying there, if you are not doing what you were designed to do, that same word applies to you, sluggard, being lazy, because you're not doing what you were designed to do. You're not doing what you were you're supposed to do. So God has designed you uniquely to do something, but it's, it's actually for himself. He wants, he wants to take pleasure in you and the pleasure that God gets in you is, you know, it's twofold. Um, It's when you are who you are. And that's what I mean by this is me. Be yourself is what we're talking about in this message. Be yourself. Um, You know, that's when you when you are being yourself, that's when you can really fulfill the joy that God has set in your heart, the thing that God has set in you in your heart for you to do. And so I'd like to begin by asking you a couple of questions just to get us all on the same page. And this first question is, I'm just can you recall a time when you were doing something? that gave you uh, this great feeling of being, you know, your best of being in the zone or in your element or, you know, where you are in your zone. This is me. And that's what this, that's what this message is about. This is me where you engaged in your strengths. They were there. Everything was clicking at the same time and you experienced the joy and the fulfillment of whatever you were contributing to something or whoever else. How many of you can recall a time when this was the, you know, this happened to you. And if you do, and if you can recall that time, how did that make you feel when this happened? Um, You know, um, I asked Pastor Thomasine these questions uh, yesterday, and we were talking about, you know, what are you doing when, when when this thing happens? And I know she has a big, big heart for um, women and for ministering 
you know, life to women in whatever situations that they're in, almost like a life coach, but in a group kind of thing. And so many of us, we are really not doing what really brings us the joy that God wants us to experience. So this message is about beginning to do that. And so as her husband, I am I'm starting to make sure that she can experience the joy that God wants her to experience because of what he's placed on the inside of her. And same thing with you, because how does that make you feel? That thing that is that you feel should be the thing that actually drives you. So the next question that I have is what drives you? You know, if if your family, if I was asked your family or your friends, what is the driving force in your life? What would be their answer? Because everybody is driven by something. Either, um, you know, sometimes we're driven by problems. We, we're, we, we are so focused on solving the problem. That's what's driving our behavior. That's what's driving everything. Some of us, we're driven by pressure. And we're driven by a, a number of different things. We're driven by uh, pain. <laughs> you know, we do what we do because of pain. We do what we do because uh, deadlines, especially if you are an organized kind of person, and you're an administrator and you have deadlines, then that's that's exactly what drives you. Some of uh, you may be driven by fear. There's so many different things that can drive you. Your, your own beliefs drive you to do certain things. Your emotions drive you to do certain things. Um, certain memories, whether they are painful memories or whether they are joyful memories. It, it drives you to do different things. So when we, you know, what is it that's driving you? And you need to be able to put your finger on that so that you can use it. I want to, I want to talk about a scripture today um, that is so important to us. It's in the book of Ecclesiastes, uh, the third chapter, because we need to find, if we don't find meaning for our lives, then um, it really it's like finding if you don't know the purpose for your life, then you have no there's no point in setting goals. You have what what goal are you reaching for if you don't know your purpose and if you don't know the, your meaning for why you are here. So I want to take a look at a scripture in, in Ecclesiastes where the um, where where the psalmist were was taking a look at that. Really, what he was searching for was meaning and he was talking about this is the third chapter. Some of you may be familiar with this chapter. Uh, the beginning of this chapter, he talks about uh, there's a time and a season for everything under the sun. Um, you know, a time to live, a time to die, a time for peace, time for war, a time to be born. All of those different, um, you know, each end of the spectrum in each one of those areas. When he gets done talking about all the different times that we experience on earth, because that's what he's talking about here is the different things, how we experience them on earth. Um, you know, and that's the, and really what he's saying is that's the way life is on earth. Life includes death. Life includes pain. Life includes the opposite. In other words, if you think about a time for joy and a time for sorrow, um, if you didn't have both of those, the other one wouldn't be meaningful. It, it wouldn't mean anything. And so God uses all of those things to bring meaning into our lives. But in the 11th verse, uh, Solomon says here, he has made, and he's talking about God. He has made everything beautiful in its time. He has made everything beautiful in its time. So based on all the times that he just talked about, you know, a time for, um, uh, even he talked about a time to embrace or a time for love and a time for reframing from love, uh, all of those different things. He's saying that God has this, the second sentence there says he being God has also set eternity in the human heart. Yet no one can fathom what God has done uh, from the beginning to the end. God has set eternity in the human heart. Um, that, that means several different things. One thing it means is that you and I are designed for eternity, not just for the time that we have here on earth, whether you live to be 80, whether you live to be 100, whatever, 120, whatever it is that however long you live, 
God had designed for you is beyond this life. And this is this is how you really become who you are. We are spending this time on earth to really practice being who we're going to be in eternity, whether that's, you know, thousands and thousands of years. You know, if you put a number on it, it's, it's millions of years. That's eternity. That's how long we will exist. So God has designed you not just for the, you know, 80 plus years that you'll live here or 100 plus years that you'll live here. God has designed you to live forever. And what Solomon is saying here with all these different things and seasons and times that we see on earth, we need to recognize who God has created us to be and start becoming that while we're here on earth because we won't be here forever. It's inevitable. You and I were not li- We will not be on this earth living as we are forever. And that's what he's saying. So when we look at that verse again, I want to pull that one piece out that says uh, he has also set eternity in the human heart. Your heart and my heart and even people who don't believe God, their heart reaches out for eternity. Their heart is reaching out for what God has created and placed on the inside of them, even though they can't fathom what it is, where God comes from, what his end is. They can't fathom any of those things. But God has set eternity in the human heart. That's why people who do live don't want to, you know, as you're living here on the earth, um, you don't want to give up life because the life that you experience, you're experiencing, um, you know, like a prelude to eternity life. And you don't want to give that up. But because that's because you don't know what the next life is like. You haven't experienced that yet. But look at what the next thing that Solomon says here in the 12th verse. He says, I know that there's nothing better for people. Now he's going back. He's coming back out of eternity saying we need to deal with who we are on earth. He says, I know that there's nothing better for people than to be happy and to do good while they live. Now, this is when he's saying there's nothing better. He's talking about you living out who God designed you to be, not just not just having a good time and putting everything on hold because you you know the rest doesn't matter he's saying here because we are eternal beings and and that's the difference in 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 people who just talk about eat drink and be merry as if this is the end of your life he's saying with the notion that you are going to live forever he's saying i know that there's nothing better for people than to be happy and do good while they live here so for you to be happy and, and do good is is bigger than just being focused on yourself because that's just the happy part. But the happy part comes because of what you are doing. He says, and do good while they live. And the next verse says, he said that each of them may eat and drink and find satisfaction in all their work or know all their toil. He says, this is the gift of God. This is the gift of God. So God has designed us. It's, you know, we didn't create ourselves. God designed us. God made us. He made us the way we are. He made, and I don't just mean he, he just made all human beings and he did, but he made you uniquely to be you. You are unique and God created you as a unique person to be who you are. And therefore you should enjoy your life. You should enjoy living. And that doesn't mean you need to do things that just bring, you know, temporary happiness. He's saying enjoy life by doing the thing that God has put in your heart to do that connects you to eternity because that's who you're going to be forever. Then learn to practice doing that here. What's in your heart that you should do? Another verse that I like to look at is in the New Testament where Paul is talking to the Colossians and he's talking about, uh, God, first of all, when he talks to them, most of these people are uh, Gentiles who didn't grow up in the Jewish religion. But he's talking to them about who Jesus Christ is and how he was from the beginning and how he's connected to God. So if you look at the verse with me, Colossians, the first chapter and the 16th verse, it says, for in him, all things were created. Talking about Jesus Christ in him, all things were created things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible. So that's every single thing, whether you can see it or whether you can't. 
And there are many things that you can't see unless you can pick up a microscope and see it. He's saying even those things, Jesus created those things. Oh, God created those things through Jesus Christ, visible and invisible. That includes, uh, you know, powers or rulers or authorities. These are things that you can't see. Uh, but in, all of these things have been created through him and for him. Now, that's that's key right there because it's saying it was created through him and for him. And this includes for Jesus. It means it was created for Jesus and created by him or created by God and created for God because they are one. But look at what the uh, message, how the message Bible says this. I like the way the message Bible says this. It says for everything, absolutely everything above and below, visible and invisible, rank after rank after rank of angels, everything got started in him and finds its purpose in him. And that's what's key is everything finds its purpose in him, in Jesus Christ and in God through Jesus Christ. So if you're looking for your purpose, if you're trying to find out who you are, and what what the, what is the meaning of your life, then you have to go to God to find that out. Because here's here's how I like to say it. And this is what came to my mind. God designed us. We're designed by God and we're designed for God, by God and for God. Many of you, if you kind of grew up in the 90s or maybe if even if you were a teenager in the 90s, you remember uh, FUBU, For Us, By Us, by Damon Johns and, and a few other people for that, that company, FUBU, For Us, By Us. Well, I'm saying BGFG, by God, for God. God designed us and it's, he designed us for himself. So what does that mean when we say he designed us and he designed us for himself. That could sound selfish. That could sound like he's leaving us out. It could sound like he doesn't care about how we feel about it. But it's all baked in there. That's what we need to take a look at is God. When God designed you, he designed you for his pleasure. But his pleasure means that he planned he what he planned on doing is loving you. And he designed you so that he could love you. So God planned me for the pleasure of loving me. He, he, he be, that's the whole reason for the universe. That's the whole reason for earth being where it is in the universe. And so he could put me on it. He, so he could put you on the earth. You can live here. God planned me for the pleasure of loving me. So if you want to know your purpose, then you need to ask God because he's your creator. You need to ask your creator. It's just like uh, if if you were, to, if you saw an invention, you know, I spent some time with some inventors recently in the last few months, the last year. And when I first started looking at the project that they were looking at, I thought I had an idea what uh, everything, you know, of what it did. But there is no way I would know how to function and how to use that if I didn't talk to the inventors, if I didn't talk to the ones who created it, if I didn't talk to the ones who put it in their hearts, it, that it came out of them and they created it. And so if I wanted to, either I had to talk to them or I had to read the instructions, the manuals that they put together, I'd have to read that stuff in order to know what this thing is all about. Well, God designed you the same way. He's the inventor. If you want to know your purpose, if you want to know the reason that you exist, then you need to talk to God. You need to you need to read his manual. You need to find out what you are all about in order to know what God has created you and put you in the earth to do. So look at another verse with me, if you would, please. And that's in Romans, the 12th chapter. Many of you are familiar with this scripture because this is. This scripture is a part of one of the reasons that I'm in the earth is helping people find value in their lives and really by finding the different gifts that they have. Um, but take a look at Romans, the sixth chapter, and this is the New International Version. And I want to show you uh, so it's, uh, the message Bible in this because it is it just brings it out so beautifully. As, uh, in Romans, the 12th chapter, Paul is talking here. He says, we have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. In other words, God has gifted each one of us differently. God has gifted you differently than he's gifted me. But here's some key things about the gifts. See, every single gift, gift has a strength and it also has 
a necessary weakness. Um, see, I believe that God allows our weaknesses. I believe God allows our flaws to make us really intentionally unique. Your flaws that you have that you work on sometimes whenever you work on them, it makes you unique. It also keeps you humble if you recognize that. But God, I believe God allows our weaknesses and our flaws to make us intentionally unique and also dependent on others because he didn't create you to be independent of others. So we have different flaws so that we have to depend on other people. We have different flaws so that we're uniquely, we're in, you know, intentionally unique, but with their strengths and their weaknesses in every single gift. And we need to recognize this, but sometimes we get so focused on our flaws and so focused on our weaknesses that what we that this is how we begin to see ourselves. It's it's important that the way you see yourself, um, you need to you need to recognize that the way you see yourself is the way that you project yourself to others, and they can't miss seeing you the way they really want to see you because they see you based on the reflection that you have of yourself. If I'm trying to see how else I can say it. it's almost like a mirror, but a mirror would mean that they see themselves in the mirror, but it's almost like a mirror of how you see yourself. And that's the reflection that they see when they see you because of your own weaknesses. And we're so focused on our own weaknesses and we're so focused on our own flaws that we don't really see the, the, the powerful person that God has created with the powerful gifts and different various gifts that he's given us. So sometimes your your own here's your sometimes take a look at this. Sometimes your own um uh, self rejection, the rejection of yourself is causing others to reject you. When others when people reject you, you need to make sure that you're not projecting that rejection and that's what they're responding to. See, when I said that God loves you and he created you to love you. He created you for the pleasure of loving you. See, God loves watching you be you. God loves watching you flourish in whatever gifts he's given you. So if you're not using those gifts, if you're not um, practicing those gifts, if you're not implementing those gifts and talents that he's given you, again, you're just, you're just as a sluggard, but then you are, you, you, you are, you are, God is not able to, to actually have the pleasure of loving you because he still loves you, but he doesn't have the pleasure of loving you because you're not being who you really are. Thus the title of this message. This is me. You need to learn to say, this is me and be yourself. And, and many of us, we try to be someone else. You need to be yourself, become comfortable with your weaknesses. And I want to say that again, because I'm not saying just, you know, not to ever work on them. But when I say become comfortable, don't become so overwhelmed with your own weaknesses that that's the only thing that you focus on. You need to focus on your strength because you have so much value that God has placed on the inside of you. Now, look at this. Um, look at this. These same verse. And I add a few other verses with it from the Message Bible. It says each of us finds our meaning. That is so key right there. Each of us finds our meaning and function as a part of his body, talking about the body of Christ, but as a chopped off finger or a cut off toe, we wouldn't amount to much. You wouldn't amount to nothing, really. If you were chopped off toe, <laughs> the foot might still be there and might be able to do a few other things. But anyways, if you're the chopped off finger or the chopped off toe, then you wouldn't amount to much. And the question is, would we? And you, you know the answer to that. So he's Paul is saying here, so we have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. And that grace is just God, just God manifold giving you something that you don't deserve. You didn't deserve it, but it's just grace. It's, it's your ability to do things that someone else would have to either struggle to do or maybe even go to school to do. You may have a gift to do it. God gave you that gift. And so you need to use that gift that brings pleasure to him. And it would actually also bring joy to your heart. But look at the rest of this. 
It says, so since we find ourselves fashioned in all these excellently formed and marvelous functions, parts in the body, body of Christ. So again, excellently formed and marvelously functioning parts in the body of Christ. He says, since we find ourselves here, let's just go ahead and be what we were made to be. That's really what he's saying in this verse. Be what you were made to be without enviously or pridefully comparing yourself to someone else or trying to be something that we aren't. So stop trying to be someone else. Stop trying to be something that you are not. Be you. Be yourself. And look at the rest of this, this verse here. It says, if, and he kind of spells out these seven different things, and I like the way the Message Bible says this. It says, if you preach, just preach God's message. Nothing else. If you help, just help. Don't take over. Just help. If you teach, stick to your teaching. Don't go off talking about everything else. If you give encouraging guidance, be careful that you don't get bossy. That's, and so he's talking. He's using all of these different things here, uh, the different motivational gifts. You and I are motivated by one or the other or a combination of these different things. So let's go on. He says, if you put in charge, in other words, your administrator, he says, don't manipulate. See, if you are put in charge, if you have the gift of administration, it's easy for you to manipulate. It's easy for you to use people for your own game because you have the gift to do that. And so he's saying, don't abuse it. Uh, don't manipulate people. And another one, if you're called to give aid to people in distress, keep your eyes open and be quick to respond. Don't just pass them by. If you work with disadvantaged people, don't let yourself get irritated with them or depressed by them because they can be depressing because a lot of them are depressed. Um, and he's saying, keep a smile on your face. This is how you be you, allowing the gifts of God to actually flow through you. So the question may come to your mind then, you know, uh, who am I and what am I here for? All these different motivations, all these different gifts. Uh, and that's what that's what uh, Solomon was talking about at the very beginning, as he was saying, you know, there's, the, um, you know, there's in the earth, there's, there's a time for life and there's a time to die. In the earth, there's a time to love and there's a time to refrain from loving. So in the earth, we have all these different things, but you are created beyond being on the earth. You're created beyond your lifespan on the earth. So why am I here? That's a question. Why am I here on earth? What am I here for? And a better question may be, who am I here for? Because as we search for meaning, you know, we, we find the answer not in ourselves, just as I was talking about the, the inventor. You know, the, you know, the purpose of a thing is never the thing. And the purpose of a thing is not determined by the thing. Whatever the thing is can't tell you what the purpose of it is. The purpose of it, the only person that knows the purpose of the thing is the designer of the thing. So in search of your purpose for you, it can't be about you because you are the thing. So what is your purpose? It's not you. You are not your purpose. What is your purpose? So the purpose of a thing, I like to say it like this. The purpose of a thing is to become a means to an end. That's what we find in Scripture you know, your purpose, the purpose for anything really is re anything that's meaningful. And that's what means actually mean. The purpose of a thing becomes a means to an end. That's what makes anything meaningful is it's a means to an end is to fulfill a purpose. And so if you are going to fulfill a purpose, that means you are tapping us. You are taking a step back from focusing on yourself. So really, you know how we started this series off talking about what are my goals? What are, you know, what am I going to do this year? It's really taking the focus off of yourself and what you want to achieve for yourself and seeing what can you do to, as a means to someone else's end that God has put you in the earth for. And you have to recognize that. So what makes you meaningful is you becoming a means to someone else's in someone else's whatever God has put you and that's that's the thing you have to ask God for and find out so I want to go through the challenge to kind of bring a little more meat to this so that you can leave with with something to do uh, in finding your purpose and living out who you are where you are being yourself see your your challenge is 
to know that God loves you, first of all. You need to know that God loves you just the way you are. Before you were ever a Christian, God loved you. God loved you before Jesus died for you. He loved you before Jesus was born on earth. God loved you. And it's not just because you didn't sin or because you worship him. Many people, uh, they, that's how they try to please God is making sure they get their worship in, making sure they get their prayer time in, uh, making sure that they read their Bible, making sure that they spend time with God. And you should do all these things, but that should not be your motivation to receive God's love. God loves you regardless of any of those things. It's not because you witness to unbelievers um, that God loves you. God, Here's what God loves. God loves watching you be your best you. God loves watching you do your thing. <laughs> That's what I call it. Do your thing. He loves, op- he loves watching you operate in your element. He loves seeing you in your zone where this is you. This is the way you operate. This is me. That's what this, this title of this message is about. This is me. And so he loves it when you flourish in the gifts that he's given you. He loves it and takes pleasure in when you flourish in the things that he put on the inside of you, the talents that he's given you. That's what God loves. And he wants to continue to love you. So your challenge is to see yourself loved by God. You need to see yourself loved by God in his image, loved by him in your element, doing your thing, knowing that God created you to do this thing, knowing that God created you to be just exactly who you are. You don't have to try to be anybody else. You are loved by God just the way you are. And God even works, as we talked about, in your flaws. God even works in your flaws and weaknesses into making you the best you. He's at work doing all this stuff, making you the best you that you can be. And it's not just so that you can die being the best you, but you're going into another life when you live, leave here and you need to be the best you that you can be. You need to practice while you're here becoming who God has put you in the earth to be. And when your time is up, then you'll go on to your next life. When my time is up, I'll go on to my next life. I know that I'm doing what God put me in the earth to do. Uh, I know that it, it takes a, it takes time to do that. And God is working with me to focus completely on that. But when my time to go is here, I'm not going to argue. I'm I'm ready. You know, I, I'm not afraid to go. I am ready to go. So we, you need to realize that your life on earth, all of the different things that you do, don't get too comfortable just doing these things here. Don't get so comfortable that you, you want to retire and live here forever and do nothing. Uh, you know, someone's telling me about someone that's retired. They say, well, that's what retirement means. I don't, I don't do nothing. I ain't doing nothing. Well, there's gift. There are gifts on the inside of you. And even if you retire from a job, you still have a mission that God put you in the earth for, and you need to continue on doing that thing. And it'll bring you joy and bring you strength and bring you life really. So here's some action steps that you can take today. Number one, Say this out loud. This, this is, you know, this is the first action thing that you can do. Say this out loud. I was created by God for God. FGBG. I'm created by God for God. And I'm, that's, that's what's in our heart. That's who God has created us to be. And then say this out loud. It's not about me because it's not. If, we, if you start focusing on yourself and just trying to please yourself, you miss your entire purpose. It's not about me, but I was created to be me. See, that is so important. Please don't miss this. It's not about me, but I was created to be me. I was created to be myself, not to be anybody else. I was created to be who God put me in the earth to be. The reason that I'm here, I talk to God about that, and I can take a look at the different gifts that I have, the different talents that I have, and, 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 and start looking in that direction and realize that this is what God put me in the earth to do. And so say this out loud. It's not about me, but I was created to be me. So, Here's a question to ask yourself as you're going through these things. Why am I doing this? Whatever it is, and this is whatever you would do, the things that you're doing, the things that you do, um, every single thing that you, every task that you do. These are some questions to help you find out if you are on task or not. 
if you are working like an ant or if you're working like a sluggard. Because you can still be busy and not be busy doing what you need to be doing. And you're just worse as worse off as a sluggard. So why am I doing this? This is a question. When you find yourself doing different things, you need to ask yourself, why am I doing this? And um, then another question is, is this something God designed and equipped me to do? Is this something? So why am I doing this? And is this something that God designed me to do? Is this something God has equipped me with the gifts to do, or am I struggling to do this? Is this something that, you know, that God put the gift on the inside of me so that I wouldn't have to struggle to do this? Another question to ask yourself is this, is this something that I should do temporarily and only for a specific time? This is very important because sometimes uh, we as administrators and leaders, um, there are different people that God put in our lives to help us to do certain things. And we think they're supposed to be there forever and they're not. And so some of the things that people do, it's a temporary assignment. So is this something that I should do temporarily and only for a specific time? Some of you, you're doing things and your time is really up because it was supposed to be temporary and you're trying to do it forever because you got satisfaction out of doing it when you were doing it. But you need to ask yourself, is this something that I should do temporarily and only for a specific time? That's a good question to ask yourself. Another question to ask yourself is this, is this something that I'm to do for the benefit of someone else? So in other words, everything is not just for you to get satisfaction out of. There are some things that you need to do temporarily that may not bring you joy in the moment, but because of what it does for someone else, it's important for you to do. Sometimes it's because you're the only one there and that can do it. Is this something that I am to do for the benefit of someone else? And if it is, then you may need to go ahead and do it. But if it's not, and, and you, as you answer these different questions, you need to take a look at each one of these different questions and answer them for yourself and be able to move forward based on your answers. The next question that you need to ask yourself is this. Am I prepared and suited to do this? So if, say, for example, you are gifted to do something, but now there's a challenge for you, even though you're using your gifts, there's some things you don't know about it. You need to get prepared for that. So the question you ask yourself is, am I prepared for it? And am I suited to do this? You may be suited because of your gifts, but you may not be prepared because you haven't studied and done what you need to do. So do what you need to do to be able to be excellent at it, to be an expert at it. And then you can move forward and answer that question with joy. When you do it, then you'll be in your element. You'll be you know, you don't just wake up and have and enjoy the things that you do and get the joy out of being who you are just because you're gifted. We need to spend some time, you know, uh, tooling our crafts and refining our tools and doing the things that we need to do to become better. We always should be coming better. You should always be on a move for improvement. Continuous improvement should be a part of your life. And so the last question that you need to ask yourself is this, is, is this sustainable? Is this something that I can continue to do? Is this sustainable? Can I, can I, you know, um, in some things you can do for a while and it, like you, you weren't designed, you weren't designed to work 60, 70, 80 hours a week forever. You might do it once, twice in a blue moon, for whatever person, but if you had to do that every week, that's not sustainable. You are killing yourself slowly. And so other, there are other things. That's just the example that comes to my mind. Is this sustainable? Is the rate that you're taking your life at uh, doing the things that you're doing, is this sustainable? Can you sustain this? Can you do this over and over again? Will you have the energy to be who you need to be at home tonight based on what all you're doing today. And if you did that every day, that means you never have energy to do what you need to do at home. And therefore your home life is falling apart. So there's different, those are the reasons that you need to ask yourself these kinds of questions. And then the, the last thing you need to do is realize this, is that if you don't know the answer to any of these questions or any one of these questions, or the answer is no to any of these questions, you should spend some time Whatever time is necessary, 
you should spend some time to understand why or the best, what's the best reason you should move forward. Why should you move forward and do what you are headed to do if the answer to these questions are no? You know, if the answer to is this something God designed me, equipped me to do, if that's no. Is this something that I should do temporarily um, if that's no? You know, is this something that um, I'm to do for the benefit of someone else? If that's no, if all these, if the answer to any of these questions are no, or if the, you know, the answer to any of these questions, uh, you don't know the answer to, then you need to spend some time finding that answer because that means you're not being yourself and you need to be able to say, this is me. This is me. I want you to live the kind of life doing the things that God has put in your heart to do, practicing who you are to the point where you can say, this is me. I'm doing what I was put on this planet to do. This is me. So as I close in this message today, uh, I want, I do want to say this. This is not about finding yourself. This message is not about what makes you happy uh, because long-term happiness is, really experiencing the fulfillment um, through being who your true self is, who God created you to be, using your unique gifts uh, to contribute to the world, um, to your family, to your community, to your church, to your school, to your workplace, to whatever you're connecting yourself to, whatever entity. The long-term happiness is experiencing fulfillment of you using your unique gifts in con- contribution to all these things. Believe it or not, you are looking for ways to contribute, and that's what really makes you happy. That's what brings joy to your heart. If you can contribute to something bigger than yourself, bigger than your own little world, uh, but contributing to others and using your unique gifts to bring joy to someone else, this is how you be who you are. This is me. So say that with me. This is me. And put something in your mind of what you do and what you believe God has created you to do when you say, this is me. And I want to pray for you. Then I'll come back after I pray and and give give you an opportunity to take some steps as far as being a part of the body of Christ and also give you an opportunity to give um, and and in ways that you, you want to connect with us so you, that you can give. So bow your heads with me, if you would, please. Father, we thank you uh, today for this message. We thank you for this entire series. Uh, this is us. And today where we're focusing on this is me. This is who God created me to be. This is who you have created us. You've created each person, God, with different gifts, various gifts, different talents, And so I'm praying today that each person that's listening to me right now and each person that will hear this later will look to you to discover what their purpose, to discover what what's meaningful for them. What means are they to be a means to an end for in the earth? What should they be attaching themselves to? I'm praying, God, that you would open up our hearts, open up our minds, uh, our wills, our emotions, everything that we have so that we can find that place and, and insert ourselves into that place where you get pleasure out of our life because that's what you designed us to do. In Jesus' name, amen.